Now each book has had kind of a theme. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that's like cookie dough texture just now as it is. Tasted good, but texture wasn't right. Right now, I'm gonna sit down and type up this curry recipe so far. So many emotions for such a small boy. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This week's video, I am going to take you guys along behind the scenes for a few days while I work on my new cookbook. So I've been working on this for the good part of about half of this year so far, but it's just been sort of more behind the scenes work. And now I'm moving closer into like the crunch time of creating this book where deadline is approaching and I really am basically spending most of my time working on this. So I wanted to vlog for a few days, show you a little bit of behind the scenes, what goes into it. Like I don't have a method of how I create a book from start to finish because this is only book three and every book I've created at a different time in my life. So there's been different things going on. At the moment, I have a juggling act of balancing being a mom, running the wholesome store, our business, as well as my socials and then also working on this cookbook. So I gave myself a much bigger timeline, well actually I got an extension on my timeline and am giving myself a little more room to breathe to create this because I really wanna enjoy the creative process and yeah, just sort of get in my flow but also still have time for those other parts of my business and life because they are just as important to me. Basically where I'm at right now is my deadline is late this year, so around November, December, and each book has had a bit of a theme. Usually I've sort of kept my books under wraps and a secret and then announced it to you guys, but this time I really wanted to be open and share with you guys I was working on the next one and so that I could show a bit of the behind the scenes as well as I'm making it uh, and also show you guys some of the recipes that we're creating. I just thought it'd be a bit more interesting and engaging for you guys to see the process. So right now, I am basically working with my assistant and we schedule each week. I'm on my laptop here. And each week we sit down and schedule which recipes I'm gonna do for the week or where I'm at. I've also got a food stylist who is helping me shoot some of the books. So we're doing probably about 50-50. And so each week we sit down and work out which recipes I can send on to her to start styling and shooting, which recipes I need to practice, which recipes I need to trial, which recipes I need to shoot, and which recipes that I need to retrial. So we basically have a few working documents that we use to do this. I'll show you guys some of this just to see if maybe I don't know, it might give you guys some ideas and tips. So we're using this site called Notion where basically there's all different workspaces. So we have cookbook notes where we've got basically the rough working list of the recipes. We've got one called cookbook three and it's got all of the recipes here. And then we have finalized yes and they'll be tested. We'll have notes and we'll have photos done. So we'll say if I've sent it to Holly, my stylist, or if they've done, yes. And yeah, it's kind of just like a working document so that we can all see where we're at with it. And then I also have, oh yeah, the monthly content calendar, which is where we plan each week what I'm doing for the week in terms of recipes, which ones I'm shooting, which ones I'm testing, which ones I'm retesting, which ones I'm sending over to Holly. And then of course, for the actual recipes, I have a few different documents. So basically I have one cookbook plan which is I use the pages app because I'm on Mac and this is where I basically write the rough list it's like early concepts I share this with my publisher so they can see the concepts I'm working on and give any feedback or make sure we're sort of on the same track now each book has had kind of a theme and with this book what I noticed from my previous books is there's certain recipes that people love and keep coming back to. And to me, those are the like the wholesome, hearty, simple recipes that people love and it becomes a staple recipe in their home and they'll cook super often. So this book, going in line with my current life, we wanted to center it around simpler vegan recipes. So recipes that require less ingredients or a short amount of time without being too boring and simple that doesn't require a recipe but being complex enough that you are cooking obviously but simple enough that for someone who's time poor has kids uni school whatever they can just you know get a few ingredients from the shops easily accessible and yeah just a recipe that becomes a staple that you can cook when you don't have much time and you just want to 
whip up something delicious. So that is the overarching theme of the book. So then obviously I break it into the different sections. I write out my ideas and then this is just a working document that constantly changes because I might make something and go, that's actually not very good or it's too complicated and or a new idea might pop up. So I'm constantly evolving and changing. But yeah, I basically just have like a rough schedule and I usually go over. So I'll like plan out about a hundred recipes, even though this book might have 80 or 90 recipes, just so I have room to cull some recipes that aren't so good. Then when I go to actually make the recipe, I will, this is just a really rough one actually, it's not a good example because I haven't even really done anything with it. So say this one, simple tomato pasta sauce. So I will list out the ingredients and write the instructions in a separate document, name it by the recipe. And then on a hard drive, I'll make a folder of all the recipe names in documents. And then I will have folders for each of the images as well. So that it's all together in one place and they're all named by the rough name of the recipe. I haven't fully decided on names. That's basically like the working schedule. So today's to-do list, let's jump back over to Notion. Is And the good thing about Notion is you can have different team members logged into the different boards with you. And you can both be editing and working on this spreadsheet um, and these checklists together. So it's a really good way to work remotely with your team or people that you're collaborating with or anything like that. Today, I am, I don't set myself huge goals because we do have Bowie upstairs who's currently napping. So I have a pretty limited time that I can work on this most days. So today I'm retesting a cookie dough recipe. It was a raw cookie dough ball recipe, which I did last week. I've got some changes I wanna make and then hopefully it'll be good enough that I can send it on to my photographer, Holly, who's down in New South Wales and she can shoot it. Next, I'm testing a new curry. It's a pumpkin curry and I'm probably gonna try and make this one in the slow cooker because I wanna have some simple slow cooker recipes in this book. And then the third one is I'm just retesting these tempeh stick snacks which are pretty pretty basic and I've cooked them a couple of times but I just want to perfect the cooking time and yeah I think this one also needs to be reshot because I didn't love the photos okay so I'm gonna get stuck into the work so I'm gonna start with my cookie dough balls which I've already written down pull up the recipe put my laptop in the kitchen with me and start recreating it recently I'm into podcasts so this is a podcast I'm gonna listen to while I'm cooking attempt number two for these ones this was a cookie dough ball that I wanted to create with chocolate chips and I made it last week but it was a bit too dry and crumbly because I didn't use dates I wanted to try making them with like a syrup in hindsight dates are what help bind something together so I made it tasted good but texture wasn't right so I've remade it just now using dates, but I'm not gonna know if this was a success until we roll them up and set them and then eat them. But as you can see, it's way stickier, which is a really good sign. So the final step will be to roll them up, set them, and then taste test them. It's like biting into a delicious crunchy chocolate. And I feel like that's like cookie dough texture just now as it is it's like spongy and soft and yum. I wonder what would happen if I baked them. Kind of curious. So curious that I am going to actually reserve one aside and I'm gonna bake it. The other important thing when creating these recipes is obviously I need to roll them all out and see how many servings it gets so that I can write that in my recipe. So I'll always write that at the top if I can to get the estimated servings. Generally my recipes, well if they're treats, they're obviously like lots of servings, but if it's like a savory, they're generally like two or four servings because I generally cook either for myself and Alex, which I think is representative of quite a lot of households, two person households, or I'll cook for four so that there's either recipe for a family of four or a household of two 
plus leftovers the next day. But yeah, that's just how I work. I have never really, I don't know what the right, wrong or right thing to do is, but I think keeping it in like twos and fours makes it easy for quantities to be doubled or halved. This is my little cookie dough that I saved and I'm going to bake this little one on its own and I'll let you guys know how it goes. Okay, so moving on to the next recipe. This is a brand new one. I'm making a creamy pumpkin curry and I wanna experiment with making like a Thai style curry in a slow cooker. I've got three types of tofu here. So I think I'm undecided what one would be best, but we basically got like a slightly firm and a very firm. And I feel like this one is somewhere in between. But I think in terms of it slow cooking and staying in its shape, I think I'm gonna try with the firm and see the result. This is just a first experiment. So yeah, really starting basic. I'm also using coconut cream for the creaminess. And then rather than pounding your own curry paste, I'm gonna try with this store-bought curry paste that I got from an Asian supermarket. So it is a vegan paste. The ingredients is chili, garlic, shallot, lemongrass, sugar, salt, kaffir, lime, galangal, and spices. And then I'm going to serve it with a bunch of freshness right before it's ready. Now, usually I would make my own paste, but I understand that sometimes you just don't have the time to be pounding a paste yourself and following a recipe and buying all of those individual ingredients. So I'm going to test it with one of these ones, see how it goes, give it my own unique spin with some of the ingredients. And then hopefully we have a very simple and delicious, this is a Penang one, so a Penang mm. curry in a slow cooker too with pumpkin, which I think will be really, really nice. So this is my cooker. It's a rice cooker. It is a slow cooker. You can even see it on high in this thing. So this is it, it's a Breville. I actually bought this for my sis when she was in quarantine, in hotel quarantine, and dropped it off to her so she could prepare some of her own meals. And I bought it because it had all those different features, which was really cool, and then she left it with me. So personally, I'm not someone who uses slow cookers much, but I want to be, and that's why I wanted to put in some slow cooker recipes, because I think it will be so handy for myself included. So I'm trying to come up with 10 delicious slow cooker recipes to put in the book. I'm gonna give this a crack in the slow cooker. And because this does have a sear setting, I'm gonna fry off the paste first to get it fragrant, and then add all the ingredients and slow cook it. So because this is a slow cooked recipe, I basically just have to put the lid on. Slow cook it for, it's got actually two settings, slow cook high, slow cook low. I'm gonna try the low setting this time, which is like a seven to eight hour cook. So ideal to put on in the morning and then head to work and come home and dinner's ready for you. How amazing is that? So in terms of the next steps when I'm creating a recipe, so while that's cooking or while one of my dishes are cooking or if they're cooked, whatever, I'll sit down to my computer and finalize what I actually put in the ingredients, just make sure it's all correct and exactly is what I did. And then I'll write down the steps really roughly generally because if I'm going to recook it again, it might change. So I don't put too much work into finalizing and perfecting the ingredients list and steps. But I generally will write down the steps as I go or at the end if it's something that I can just easily remember. Big mistake to leave it and go and do this later because you seriously just forget. So I always, as I'm going, I might even jot down like the oven temperature or the cooking time as I go, or the time I started on the clock and then I'll come back and write the time I finish at the end just as I go because otherwise these details can easily get forgotten and then I've got to cook it again. So right now I'm gonna sit down and type up this curry recipe so far just really roughly so that I have something to start on if um, the recipe is perfect. Yeah, all your hot tips, <laughs> what hot tips? How to write a recipe. And silly me was so distracted cooking this next recipe that I burnt the cookie. But lucky, it's just a batch of those raw cookie dough balls. So I'm gonna throw another one in there just to give it one more trial. From the looks of things, 
it's way too crumbly when it's baked. So in terms of work today, Bowie has woken up so we had lunch and then he woke up and I just had one more thing on my to-do list today which is pretty good except the kitchen is a mess I'll show you quickly so part of a day of working on recipes is tidying the kitchen afterwards and that in itself is such a big job <laughs> that's fine I'll tackle that when I'm done um so the last thing I want to work work on is though the tempeh what do I call it tempeh sticks um baked tempeh sticks so I'm gonna find the recipe and try it once more yeah sometimes ideas just randomly come to me and I was just sitting down and I had just like a moment of thinking like I don't think I have salads in this book in this plan sorry so I just had a salad two salad ideas come to me and I'm gonna add those to the list which means I'll have to kick two off from somewhere else which is fine but yeah I just sometimes have random ideas come to me or thoughts Usually it's when I'm laying in bed and trying to fall asleep. So anyway, this recipe is just like a simple snack. I just made it one day, just like baked tempeh sticks. It's very simple, but they're just marinated and baked really yummy. You can add them to salads. You can snack on them on their own. And yeah, I just want to perfect it one more time. So I'm gonna grab the ingredients and make it. And I did manage to cook the cookie again. I haven't tried it, but I got it out a little bit sooner this time. Let's see if we can make a cookie from it. I still think it was a little bit crispy on the outside. It's yummy because the chocolate chips are a little bit melty, but I love cookies so much. So I feel like I'm so critical on cookies. And to me, that's just not the texture I would like in a cookie. So I'm just gonna leave it as the raw cookie dough balls for now. So for reference of what this day looks like, I'm only doing three. Tempted to do with a salad recipe, but I don't think I have everything that I need. Um, but in terms of context of like um, other books, when I had my shoot days, which is what's gonna happen later down the track when I'm like crunching to get it all done quickly, I had shoot days in my last books and I do like a shoot week. And some days Alex and I would cook and shoot like six to 10 recipes. When you're shooting, you need the good daylight hours for nice light so yeah that was a lot really hectic and i would be so exhausted by the end of the day and the funny thing is you're cooking all day and shooting and then by the end of the day you honestly just like don't even feel like eating it which sounds ridiculous and stupid but from all accounts of everyone i've met who does something similar even like chefs or people who work in hospitality they often say like when you're handling food all day you kind of like lose your appetite for it which is really sucky but anyway, when we were doing the big cook ups, we would invite like a bunch of friends over in the afternoon to all eat the food together, which was a great way to not only have people like taste test things for you, but also like not waste food. Whoa, probably should have put this in a container. I'm gonna do that. Okay, now I'm going to leave that to marinate while the oven heats. So that is the last recipe that I was prepping today. I'm not gonna do the, like how to serve this. I just wanted to get the timing right for the actual tempeh sticks. So that was 20 minutes and I think that looks crispy enough. And yeah, to be continued tomorrow. So it's now 6 p.m. So this has been in the cooker for quite a few hours now. So it has been on there for five or six hours and it is looking so nice and cooked. The pumpkin's like, falling away from the skin very soft and so is the onion and the tofu hasn't fallen apart which is good but yeah when I serve it will obviously make it look a bit better and we just gave Bowie a couple of these sticks for dinner and he loved them always loves his corn but yeah he frothed the tempeh so that's a big win for us tonight ah, good morning uh, it's Wednesday today and I have a hair appointment in under an hour so i'm hoping to test one recipe this morning and one this afternoon because i don't want to plan too much on my day because whenever you get your hair 
dyed, it always takes so much longer than I expect. So yeah, I have two recipes I want to work on today. So I think I'm just going to do the smoothie this morning. We only just put in some bananas into the freezer. So it probably won't be the consistency that I want the smoothie, but it'll just be good to get. Oh, he's a little bit emotional, as you probably can hear. What happened? Lots of emotions this week. Lots of outbursts. I think there's lots of teethies coming through. Bowie! All right, I'm gonna go get all my ingredients ready and ride out this smoothie first. So many emotions for such a small boy. Okay. So the other thing I need to do when I jump onto my computer before I start creating recipes is go back to our joint note that I have with my assistant and just check if I've tested and if it's complete, where it's up to, etc. So that's something I'll usually do either, well, actually, it's probably something I could do um, at my hair appointment to utilize best time because that app is also on my phone. Um, but with the little time I have, I'm going to make this smoothie and write down the exact quantities so that it is a perfect size in a jar because usually when I make recipes, I mean, when I make smoothies, I just throw things in a blender, which I think most of us do, but in terms of putting it inside a book, I want to be pretty direct with quantities. that we have. <laughs> In terms of flavor, delicious. I'll probably make this peanut butter mm. cup. The peanut butter around the side with the chocolate chips is just for appearance. And I use half a frozen banana, half a non-frozen banana. So I'll probably make it again when the bananas are frozen just to confirm the consistency. Flavor wise, maybe I'd probably do less than a quarter of a cup of peanut butter. That's quite a lot. But yum. All right, get ready for my hair appointment clean up here. And to be continued when I get home. Bowie, do you want to walk over here? <laughs> nice walking. Ta. Ta. Come on. Ta. You want me to pick you up? Oh, big boy. So yesterday I made these and I'm happy with them. They're yummy. They're not rolled to perfection because I was rushing. And I'm going to send this recipe off to my stylist. Yes, you want to try it? Okay, let me have the first bite. No bite? Mmm. <laughs> what do you think? You've probably never eaten anything like this. What do you think? <laughs> Can I have a bite? For mommy? Yeah. In my mouth. Well, putting it back in the jar, that's nice. But I want to eat it. All in the mouth. The whole thing. Wowie. So I've gone to prep this recipe and because it's not one that I planned to do this week, I'm actually missing two of the key ingredients, but I'm going to make the dressing now because that's like kind of like a separate recipe for the salad. <laughs> I like beauty. Good luck. You're gonna get for the kind of 
so that is the dressing done. It tastes really nice and zesty, which is what I wanted. But of course I need to see how it tastes with the rest of the ingredients. Hi guys, it is Thursday. The week is flying by. And I'm back in the kitchen to do another recipe. I'm just doing another smoothie at the moment. So it's gonna be super quick. It's a smoothie I make all the time. So it's gonna be so easy. I just need to get the quantities correct. And it's just a simple banana smoothie. Delicious Bowie. Bowie versus watermelon. You can see the watermelon won that battle. <laughs> Do you want to sip? You said more. Bowie. <laughs> oh my god. Did you like that? <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. <laughs> 